so a lot of people want to complain about their privacy. Meanwhile, my privacy didn't make a goddamn difference, now did it? Did my privacy matter to Natalie Bollinger or Maddie Boa? Or uh, the officers who assaulted me on January 6th of last year? Did my privacy matter to the media? Did my privacy matter to any of these Facebook groups? Any of these Sean Schwartz hate groups masquerading as Natalie Bollinger groups? I was threatened. My life was literally threatened over 100 times before I ever threatened anyone else's life. Over 100 times my life was threatened before I threatened the life of Ted Bollinger. And I do want the life of Ted Bollinger. I want him to spend his life in prison for the things that he did to Natalie and the things that he did to me. Meanwhile, the media, if I ever get a day in court, it's going to be shitting their pants over all of the predators that they made out to be victims. Yes, the media made out Ted Bollinger, who raped his own daughter, to be a victim. I guarantee you I cared more about Natalie than that man. Danica said so. Shelly said so. He barely had any reaction at all. Kind of like Anna Hunka's brothers barely had any reaction at all to her death. Kind of like my family had hardly any reaction at all to my grandmother's death. They were there because they were expected to. I was gang stalked over slander before Natalie died. But I want you guys to pay attention to something. Over 100 threats against my life before I ever threatened anyone's life. And that threat was to try to keep Shelly Campbell safe, to keep Danica Garner safe, to keep Rose M. Kelly safe, to keep Alicia Bollinger safe. I give a fuck less about Ted Bollinger's brother or his sister. I don't give a fuck about them at all. They're terrible people. His brother molested Natalie as well. His sister is invested in trying to cover up the wrongdoing. My family doesn't give a fuck. They never have. I'm not normal enough for my family. Meanwhile, my mom is one of the fucking creepiest weirdos you'll ever meet. And uh, she pretends to be Christian when it suits her, much like Todd Rust. Todd Rust's daughter-in-law, or stepdaughter, said the same thing about Todd. And that recording is on here as well. The police literally ignored everything these people did to me. Went out of their way not to take a look. And you, the general public, don't give a fuck because they painted me as a bad guy. The Predators painted their victim as the Predator. And you guys want to be pissed off that I'm speaking out, that I'm screaming. You don't like the way that I behave? How would you expect me to behave? How would you behave if this happened to you? If you were separated from all of your loved ones. If you were assaulted for things that you didn't do. If all of your predators were allowed to walk free. And you were punished. For being victimized. I knew I'd be punished more for speaking out. But it's the Constitution of the United States of America. A document which means a lot 
or at least it would if it was still in place. Meanwhile, we have cowards going off to foreign country to shoot children and say that they're fighting for my freedom. This isn't freedom. The slander by the police and Bollinger's made me on the run before August of last year when I ended up with warrants for crimes I actually committed. At least I actually lit that fire. At least I actually threatened the president. Why did I have to do these things? Because my friends didn't give a fuck. That's what happens when people call you a child molester or a rapist. People don't want to associate with you. They don't want your name with theirs. They don't want public opinion. All these people who say, you shouldn't care what other people think. Meanwhile, they run away because they care what other people think. They don't want to be picked on for being friends with somebody who is accused of being a child molester. That's why I needed a fucking day in court for this shit. Over 100 threats ignored by the police. These threats started before Natalie was killed. Well before Natalie was killed. These threats against my life, where people were threatening to kill me, had been going on since Dece sorry January of 2017. I was going to say December of 2016. By December of 2016, people had only offered to cut off my nuts. And I posted a few times, if removing my testicles, if cutting my equipment off will make it so that we can be friends, I'm down. Go ahead, take my equipment. I don't use it for anything except urinating. Fucking morons. And nobody cares, because nobody cared when it mattered. They slandered my name and prevented me from defending myself when people were looking. And then I got folks saying, well, you know, it, it should have all blown over by now. No. People in Chapel, Nebraska will always remember this. People in Boulder, Colorado will always remember this. And these are the two places that I have people who are familiar to me. These are the two places that I could have gone to to recover. But with being tied up in the courts and having to travel to places where I was unsafe, over and over and over again. All of my money being eaten up. All of my time being eaten up. And I'm not allowed to defend myself against any of these people. Candace Bondurant belongs in prison for what she's done. She's got two daughters. She's not the only one. Todd Rust, well, he didn't do anything to deserve prison. But he did some pretty immoral bullshit. And pretended like he's Christian. Just like Alicia Bollinger. Just like Roseanne Kelly. These people say in Jesus' name and you eat up everything that they say because you're a fucking moron. You slander my name and threaten my life because these people lied to you. In Jesus' name. So it's alright. It's not alright. My dad didn't fucking care. But he wanted to throw a big ass fucking tantrum because I made a video. Yeah, dad, that video was about you for a reason. You son of a bitch. You want to verbally abuse me. You physically abused me when I'm a kid. You aren't there for most of my life because you can't stay off of cocaine. You become an abusive alcoholic. 
And then I go up there this time, hoping that you have changed. And I get there and you verbally abuse me. No matter what I say, you're not going to listen. No matter what I say, you're going to interrupt me and talk over me. He is worse than Shannon Alvarado by a lot. Because my dad is one of those people who has it in his head that he's 100% correct all the time. My dad's also dumb as a fucking stump. Now, when it came to the things that I needed to do, he wasn't going to hear it. When I made that recording of our phone call when I was in Montana, he tried pretending to make himself look like he was the good guy. He tried pretending like he had asked me to go down there with him and he was going to go down there with me every morning to try to make himself look good. Making himself look good is more important than the truth, more important than his own son. Not that it matters, he neglected me most of my life ignored the fact that I existed. In the over 20 years since I left my dad's house in Washington State, he has literally never called me just to say hi, just to tell me he loves me. He's never called me on my birthday, never called me on Christmas, Never sent a Christmas card or a birthday card. There's a lot of people who uh, don't know their dad and they have to go through the same thing. But it's different for me because the man exists. I know who my daddy is. And he still don't give a shit. It's about, well, his pride. For me, it's not a matter of pride. It's a matter of the physical and mental bullshit that I have to deal with every single day over the things that were done to me. I have no money over the things they did. My back is fucked up over the things they did. My legs are fucked up over the things that they did. My head is fucked up over the things that they did. And you want me to shut up. These are your constitutional rights. I'm not entitled to them, but you are. So it must be okay because it's not happening to you. You're a fucking coward and a hypocrite. I have no respect for any soldier. No respect for any officer. Why is that? I believe in respecting people until they give me a reason not to respect them. Putting on the badge is a reason to disrespect them at this point. I treat them with respect. When an officer is right behind me when I'm going into the Starbucks, I will hold the door. This is Cheyenne, Wyoming. I see hundreds of soldiers a day. And if they're behind me when I get to the door, I hold it open for them too. But it's not because they're soldiers. It's not because they're cops. It's because they're human beings. And even if I can't respect you as a pig, or a fucking mercenary, which is what they are, I can still respect you as a human being.